quick update where we are with the uh, AI functionality that we're adding to LMS in the upcoming 4.5 release. Uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit and then I'm going to hand over to Huang who's actually going to do something more interesting and actually do, do the demo of the functionality itself. Just sort of give a bit of a, a little bit of an overview of the, the functionality. Um, the functionality that we're introducing in 4.5 uh, is underpinned by a, a new AI subsystem that we've developed. Um, and sort of, I suppose, we've sort of had this bit of a mission statement that sort of sums up what we want to achieve with the subsystem. And it, it's basically that we wanted a way to provide a consistent and user-friendly experience for users to interact with AI in LMS while providing them uh, well, sorry, while allowing them to continue their teaching and learning activities and also while providing a straightforward integration with various AI providers on the back end and doing all of that while adhering to our own uh, Moodle AI principles and the appropriate uh, legislation. Uh, part of what this sort of means is that the element uh, the AI subsystem includes a sort of a solid foundation to build on and extend the AI capability of LMS. And sort of suppose perhaps more importantly, uh, it also means that others in the community can also use this foundation to build upon in the future too. So sort of the functionality is sort of not just aimed at us, it's sort of aimed at sort of benefic uh, benefiting everybody. And look, I won't go into the, uh, the subsystem in sort of too much more detail, uh, mainly because of time constraints, and I do want to leave time for Huang to do a demo. So in lieu of sort of going in more depth, uh, there's a couple of places that you can sort of uh, go through yourself and get some more information. Firstly is the uh, the Epic link. It's always a good place to start. It also has links to various other things like the documentation and stuff like that. Uh, I also do encourage everybody to have a look at the overview video that's linked uh, on this slide. It goes over the subsystem itself our rationale for how we're doing it, uh, the approach that we went, uh, and a few other things. And it goes into in sort of a reasonable amount of detail, much more detail than I've got time to go through in here. And then finally, very hot off the press, uh, we have an, a brand new prototype site. So this site will be able to allow us to do some uh, testing and some more research and some other activities as we continue to develop the functionality in LMS. Uh, the site doesn't have open access at the moment uh, it is brand new but reach out to me if you want to have a look uh, and I think uh, yeah there's some chat there going around the, the prototype site so I can provide more details to the people about that later one thing I just uh, wanted to give a bit of a quick shout out uh, is sort of the progress that the team has made on the work. It's been a pretty epic effort sort of getting it all done and getting from where we started to where we are now. Uh, if you haven't come across the uh, subsystem design yet, uh, sort of essentially at a higher level, it consists of three main components. Uh, placements, actions, and providers. So if you think of placements, uh, they're how users interact with AI. So they're things like the user interfaces and the workflows and things like that. Uh, we planned for the initial release to deliver one, uh, but we're on track to deliver two, which is great. Uh, actions, so these are the things that you can do with AI and LMS. So think, think of things like generating images, generating text, that sort of thing. Uh, we managed one, but we've, uh, sorry, we planned one, but we, we managed three. Uh, which is also good, and Huang will demonstrate some of those shortly. And uh, on the provider side, so these are the things that provide the actions and are the connectors between LMS and the external AI services. Uh, again, we planned uh, one, uh, sorry, we planned, yeah, we planned one, uh, we'll be able to deliver two. We almost got to three, but we'll be sort of holding on to that sort of third one. It's not quite ready, so that'll be in the next release. And uh, all of these are, currently in the integration queue and some have started uh, integration review and they're on track for 4.5. So basically that's enough of me speaking. Um, I'm going to hand over to Huang who's going to give a demonstration of what will be landing in 4.5. Just a quick mention uh, that what you'll see is very, very close to what the, um, the final functionality will be, but it's sort of not the final iteration. It's, it's, uh, almost there. So most notably, uh, the copy for some of the descriptions and titles and things needs to be updated. The copy work has been done and Julia and the PX team have done an awesome job with that. We just need to update it in the code. So there's a couple of little things that this isn't the final final. But uh, with that, over to you, Huang, for a demo. Hello, everyone. So my name is Horns. I'm a developer and integrator in the Hedgehog team of the Moodle platform. 
So uh, today I uh, would like to show you the new AI features uh, for Moodle. So the first one is uh, the AI content generation uh, for the tiny MCs editor, uh, both text and image. And the second one is the AI course assistant. So first we will go with the tiny MC. Uh, so you can see uh, in the tiny MC tool right here, there will be a new sparkle button there. Uh, clicking on those buttons, uh, we will have two menu items, uh, one for the tech generations and the second one is the image generation. Uh, we will go with the tech generation first. Uh, if the user use this new feature, new AI feature at the first time, they will see the new AI use policies here. The user can choose to accept or decline. Uh, if the user decided to decline, uh, they cannot use the new feature. And so I just need to accept and continue. So um, this policy is only need to be accept only once. So if I close the uh, dialog and open the tech generations again. It will not be source anymore. So this is the URI for the text generation. So on the left, the text area does allow the user to decry the text, uh, the one they uh, to create. Uh, so let's do it. Um, uh, so for example, write an introduction uh, for uh, the global Moodle Mood 2024 in the Mexico City this year. I press the generated text. This will process the request. So on the right, uh, we will have the generated content here, which was generated by the AI provider. In this case, it's the OpenAI. Uh, but we also have plans to support other providers such as the uh, Microsoft Azure AI or Google Gemini in the future. So uh, if we are not happy with uh, this generated contents, we always can uh, click on regenerate button here. So we'll try to regenerate another version for this one. Okay, so this is another version. And if we are happy with this content, we can click on the insert buttons. So uh, the content will be inserted to the tiny MC editor. And you can see that uh, the generated content will be grabbed into this pen tag with a, which has multiple data attributes to indicate that the content is generated by AI, including the prompt, the audit original prompts of the content and the creation times. So that's it, the uh, text generation. So I will move on to the image one. Let's click on the uh, generate image. So this is the URI for the uh, uh, image generation. So on the left, we, we also have the text uh, area that's allow the user to decry the image that uh, they want the AI to decry, to, to create. Uh, so let's test it. Uh, so let's draw a picture for a better case for Moodle in orange. Uh, Besides that, uh, I can change the image quality uh, between status and high quality. Uh, I can also control the shapes of the image, like squares or landscape or portrait. So let's choose landscape, generate the image. So depending on the complexity of the prompt, the qualities of the image that you have choose, and the uh, image shapes, uh, this process can be quick or long. So let's wait. Uh, okay, so as you can see, uh, the image was generated and it's did like uh, on the right side of the dialog. Uh, we have the, the, the white background here, so we cannot see the watermarks of the image, but we also add 
uh, a small watermark at the bottom of the image and said that this one is generated by the AI. That we add to indicate that this one is generated and not real. Uh, if uh, we are not happy with this picture, we also can press regenerate button. We will try to regenerate another version uh, for this image. Uh, I will not press the regenerate again because it will cost another minute. Uh, so I just press next. So the image will be sent to the normal image instructions of the tiny MC. Um, sorry, this is a bug. Okay, so uh, the uh, the alternative text uh, for the picture will be filled automatically based on the prompts, the original prompts of the uh, the the, the prompt that was sent were decried by the user in the previous tab. So a picture of the birthday cake from Moodle in orange. So we also add uh, the extra text at the ends of the description uh, to say that this one is AI generated. Uh, to indicate that this one is, is not real. So uh, if the uh, original prompts is longer than 125 characters, this will be truncated uh, to, and shortened to be fixed with 125 characters here. Uh, we decide to cancel it, the image will be gone. We, if we press save, if we insert to the tiny MC editor here, like the normal uh, image. So that's the uh, image one. So the last one is the cost assistant. So uh, I'm having a course that uh, have three activity here. So the first one is the announcement uh, of uh, forums activity. The last three is the page activity that contain uh, some example uh, is a so let's test with the first one uh, the announcement. So I'm um, having a sample announcement that's now a change of business address here. Uh, Dr. John no medical practice is, is expanding and really relocating to somewhere I don't want to which all of these tech because it's too long. Uh, I just click on the summary button here. If we try to summarize the content here to uh, the AI drawer in the, on the right side. So Dr. John, the medical party moving to a larger suit with the same building. Uh, also, we had the generated by the AI at the end of the tech to make sure that uh, we uh, let the user know this one is generated by AI, not Moodle. If you're not happy with this version, we also can spread regenerate. This will try to regenerate another version. If you like this one, you can click on the copy button. The text will be copied to clipboards. You can paste anywhere. It closes. So let's test with another sample, uh, the camera kimchi. So this is an example as they rely uh, that the title is the grandma kimchi. And it's very long. I want a softened version of this. So click on the summary button here. It will try to generate a summary version for me. So you see the response on the right every Saturday morning. The aromas of the crust, garlic, and pepper mean my grandma was making kimchi in the kitchen. If you have not happy with it, uh, you can regenerate it. We are now the version. So here we can copy it. Yeah. So uh, that's the, the cost assistant. Yep, sorry, I forgot that all of the new features uh, can, can be controlled by uh, site administration setting and capability. So it's easy to control the new feature for student, teacher, and editor teacher. Thanks, everyone.